going into flower this year you obviously want to maximize your yields and get fat nugs so we are going to be chatting with dean today and he's going to be telling us a little bit more about about how to maximize your yields coming into flower let's check it out you know these kinds of tips that we're going to be chatting today are relevant indoor outdoor doesn't really matter uh you know just before you're getting into the the flowering period there's a couple a couple things you can do to to improve so yeah, I'm keen to to chat about a few tips today and see if they can be of use to to our listeners out there. Is this going to be like a? Do you have some do's and don'ts, or is it mainly do's, or, or what? Are, what do you what are you leaning today? I think some do's and some don'ts. Uh, you know, don't slack off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now's the time for work. Don't think it's going to happen just, on its own. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it will. You know, but you might get into the period and then regret not having just put in that little bit of extra work. Now mm-hmm. uh, there's still time to. Uh, put put into place some resolutions uh, to make sure you don't have issues in the flowering period. So yeah, I think just a couple, mostly a couple tips for 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 everyone, uh, and some things that I would personally that I've personally been doing over the last sort of two weeks. And I've got a big session this weekend as well, and then I'm kind of gonna ride ride into the period. Bang on. Okay, so where are we where are we starting today? What's is this like? Uh, are they going to be in order as well? Like uh, least important to most important? Where's your first I think one kind out? of steps, steps like uh, steps. What 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 one would do first? I think first, right now, you'd need to identify what's going on in your garden. Like uh, if you've if you've just sort of left your plants through the summer period and everything's super super bushy, you might not even be aware that you are facing particular issues. So I would start off by doing a, a massive uh, inspection of your of your grow space. Uh, um, you know, if you it's super leafy, I I definitely look at some defoliation and some lollipopping. Uh, if you're in in somewhere like Cape Town where the uh, where the wind is is super hectic, uh, I'd probably look at okay, cool, where where could I potentially support some some branches? So just sort of have a scroll stroll through the garden and identify where you think the weak points of your grow currently are. And uh, from there, you can kind of start to set up the strategy for what can I do now in order to make sure that these plants are gonna are gonna yield super well. And also while doing the inspection, pay attention to you know color of the leaf, uh, any weird uh, disfigurations or discolorations or marks on the leaves as well, because all of those could be indicators of a potential issue. And uh, Luckily, you know, a lot of us won't be into flower just yet. Some of us might be seeing a little bit of pistil, but there's a, you know, or or some strains would have maybe been already a little bit further down the line. I have one plant that's like quite well into flower. I don't know how that happened. Uh, Everything else around it isn't. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, you still got enough time to just uh, jot down a couple notes and uh, then either procure or or get the equipment needed in order to just make sure that you're entering into this period with a bit of a with a bit of a plan so mm-hmm. yeah step one would be probably set up a plan for the next uh, sort of four to six weeks yeah so you say uh, obviously you've got uh, defoliate lollipop a bit uh, obviously check the space um is there like any sort of extra tips with like um, IPM or that? I mean, that's obviously something where it could go quite wrong at this stage. Yeah, so I think that's the main thing. Once you've uh, once you've got your strategy, uh, you know, it's time to put in some work. So I'd get in there and do a massive defoliation. You're only going to be able to defoliate again probably three, four weeks into three weeks into flower. Most people defoliate day twenty one. So, you know, now is the time to get into the center, center of the plant, rip out all that leaf matter that's not getting any light, uh, pull any random stems down there that's also not getting any light or or limiting airflow. Uh, That's obviously the defoliation and lollipopping. And then to get the get the spray bottle out and to start to mix up some some IPM. Um, you know, PM uh, for for us by the coast. PM is massive. Mm. Uh, you know, in the in the Helderberg Basin where we're situated, it's like a PM breeding wonderland. So that's one of the main issues that we face. But also uh, caterpillars, uh, red spider mite, thrip, all of that is going to be doing doing its thing in the garden uh, countrywide. You know, so mm. uh, just getting something in order to start to build up res- some resilience against that. Um, would be would be advisable you know i'm doing a 
but all of those yeah, are going to just be a like, weekly. you know, any of those are pests that uh, if you get an infestation at this point. Yeah, it could turn into a massive infestation come flower and really negatively affect the, the end results. You might still get through it, you know, but uh, you'll probably have a plant covered in webs by the time. Mm. If you have spider mites now in veg, by the time you get to week nine of flower, you're going to have like one of those horror stories like we've looked at in some of those episodes when we've done sort of pest uh, pest identification. Fine so, nice. you know, that that IPM strategy would probably be step number two, you know, a bit of physical work and in the identification. And then number two, just making sure you do have the products at hand and some kind of strategy for for um, your IPM. Uh, I've recently also started using a product called like Feni Biosulfur, which is a super, super powerful like sulfur product and that you can't spray at all into flower, but it uh, it will wipe any PM that you have, spores and stuff like that, that you've got now. Um, so you can still spray that now as a last sort of, uh, if you haven't got any pistols shown yet, and then after that, for sort of week one to three of flower, you'd swap into some biologicals like AQSF um, and uh, BioTrico, both of which are biological products or sort of disease pro, you know, from EcoBuzz, mm -hmm. whatever product you have at hand. And those will all help to build up a sort of biological resistance on the leaf. But uh, there's still time now in the veg to bring out the sort of the hardcore, the more hardcore kinds of uh kinds of products in order to, you know, in order to just make sure that everything's nice and clean going into the, going into the period. What about uh, feeding and boosters? Is it too early for boosters? Are you adapting your feeding schedule now? So yeah, step three would probably be to now uh, start to get the plants as healthy as possible. You know, if you've, if you've still got growth on the plant that if it's still not sort of dark green and things aren't looking hundred percent, or maybe you're not super happy with how the, the veg plant is looking, trying to correct those things now is really going to help your plant assume when it kicks into flower. Because when it kicks into flower, we've got our stretch phase or our rapid growth phase where we're looking at sort of two to three, to two weeks of massive growth. And if your plant's super, super healthy going into that, into that phase, then you, you're you going to get even more growth. So a lot of the time it comes from two reasons. Maybe you haven't been dosing. Maybe your soil's not that good if you're growing in the ground and you haven't been dosing anything additional. But uh, a lot of the time we'll see people growing in containers, okay? And you've probably planted in this container in September, October, November, and your plant might be quite decent size now, but you might be finding that you're having to water nearly every single day and... Uh, that would be, and also maybe your plant is starting to yellow a bit or it's starting to look sort of not as healthy as it did earlier on. And that would indicate that you might be pot bound. So there's still time now also to repot into a bigger growth container. Like we've got some, we've got one or two plants that are in 50s and they're quite big. And I thought the 50 would be the final home but uh, they've completely outgrown that 50. And now the growth compared to another plant, which is in a, like a massive grow bed, uh, and it's a month younger, is starting to catch up on those. So you can see that they're starting to run out of root space and they're not really uptaking nutrients as well. So maybe uh, uh, doubling your pot size now to allow for that, that, that rapid sort of burst growth, there's still gonna be time for you to repot we will plan to get through the little bit of shock that it that it has to settle into mm -hmm. its new growth space and then to really maximize its roots during that uh, during that period uh, and then obviously dosing dosing a couple things to to hopefully give it a boost even further if you do go for the for the uh for the repot i definitely suggest like a nice foliar feed with some fish mix and maybe a dose of some fish mix into the into the substrate and then just uh, sort of maximizing some molasses or sort of some, uh, you know, some some gr uh, grow orientated nutrients now just for that final couple of weeks of boost. You can still see some really good growth uh, in this period. And uh, obviously, just to make sure that you do have some kind of strategy for a flowering feed, like uh, a lot of the time I found I can get through a whole veg period with using little to no nutrients. 
But uh, if I run it through the flowering period the same, then uh, you, I sometimes don't get the same results. So maybe mm. looking to dose a bit of extra nutrients during your flowering period could also be highly beneficial in order to increase those yields because you know they're getting really hungry they're going to consume a lot of what's in the in the soil they know the plant their life's coming to an end they need to attract uh, attract uh, some pollen onto them from from uh, in the in the wild mm -hmm. you know so if if they're super dank and smelly uh they they have more chance of survival so if you feed them more they're going to uptake that better to try and just danken out even even further. So yeah, correct your, I suppose as tip three, correct what uh, issues you do potentially have now with relation to pot size or or feed, and then prepare your arsenal for, uh, for, a, for a flowering period feed, because that's also going to be beneficial uh, if you have everything at hand and you know what you, you know what you want and you've consulted to know the correct feeding procedures and, and things like that. Brilliant. Uh, any other last uh, closing tips or thoughts? Yeah, so my final tip is uh, uh, one to try and avoid some disappointment. So the like, uh, I once again... <laughs> we'll uh, try to avoid disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for this one, I'll tell a little story. I remember back in probably 2019, I had these massive green gelato plants and they were super resilient. They were doing super well. I was like, no, nah, I don't need to do anything to them. And I kind of just lost them. And uh, then one super windy night, they had no support, didn't have anything. One super windy night, they were week four, week five into flower, you know, proper nugs had started to form. And uh, I came outside and they were all just like broken up into a million pieces because they had no support. And now they had this weight on them all of a sudden that they're not used to having because, I mean, they did grow outside. So they had grown in a natural environment, but the buds had gotten so big so quickly that I think it kind of just like off weighted the plant and it caused the plant to, to snap in the windy period. Now, I mean, you can, you can try to as much as possible to, to avoid it, but it will start, sometimes still happen. But there are a couple of things you could potentially do to, to lessen this. So maybe getting some uh, support, uh, su support onto the plants, like you could do that in various different ways from a couple tie downs to potentially adding a net into into the your outdoor space or indoor space or uh, or maybe doing a cage if you are going outside you know a chicken a chicken mesh cage but looking at um, you can google a couple of things as well to get some sort of visual visual uh, uh, assistance here but looking at just a bit of support for the plants is going to be one of the main things you can do to avoid disappointments during this period so Think about massive nugs the size of your arm. Think about how heavy they're going to be okay. and think, okay, cool. Maybe this plant could use just a tiny bit of, uh, of support during this period. And uh, it will be better to get it in now so that when it stretches, it can grow. Say you do a cage. When it, it stretches, it grows through the cage and now, boom, it's supported. And also the whole the whole idea behind support is okay cool if the plant knows that it's supported it now knows that it can, can put more weight onto the bud because it's it's not going to be so worried about uh about it it breaking so if your plant is well supported and your plant is healthy it's going to give you better results in the long run so yeah just uh once again it comes kind of to mm. like a little bit of pre-preparation decide how you can support in your growth space and just add in a little bit of support it can only be beneficial and you don't want to wake up one morning and look out your window and everything's lying on the ground and, and snapped so yeah that would uh, be my final tip for for preparation in this in this period i think if you follow the four the four tips you'll be well on the way to uh to having a successful uh, a successful grow during this uh during this period I was going to also say that uh, just watch out for anyone with prying eyes that may want to take your plants because as soon as they see some sort of nugs forming on them, they become a hot commodity. But anyway, guys, we are running out of time today. Uh, so I do want to say thanks for everyone for watching. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next week. Peace, guys. Peace, guys. <laughs>